just like two years ago, you're a prep. And I remember one of my senior leaders telling us that the definition of a saint is someone who gets knocked down three times and gets up four. As we begin the celebration of the Feast of All Saints, I think that's important to keep in mind. The saints weren't perfect. They were real, flawed, and human, just like the rest of us. They made mistakes. But when they did, they never lost sight of their ultimate goal, to follow Christ and eventually to live with him forever. They're saints because they never gave up. They never stopped trying to be the people that God was calling them to be, even if they weren't always successful. I think we can learn a lot from them. We can't be perfect, but maybe what matters is that we keep trying. Let's look to the saints for inspiration and encouragement today as we celebrate this feast. Today's liturgy is going to be celebrated by Father Casals, the Assistant Director and Promoter of Vocations for the Jesuits of USA, Northeast, and Maryland provinces, essentially the entire East Coast. Father Casals works with young men who are considering becoming Jesuits, and he is here with us today. Please give him your full attention as he leads us in prayer. And if you see him after Mass when he calls to school, make sure he feels well. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the word made flesh and 
splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has this hope based on Him makes himself pure, as He is pure. The Word of the Lord. I wasn't just hunger, hungry for anything. 
What I was craving for was my mom's cooking, home cooking. I wanted to sit at the table that my dad had made, the chairs my dad had called, and have some of her home cooking. My mom sings when she cooks, kind of hums to herself. And she cooks the old recipes, recipes her mom taught her. She makes a great apple pie. My dad, he's serious. He's about the business. I think he wanted me and still wants me to be a carpenter. But I left home. I left home to join my cousin John. He was down at the river, Jordan. Doing something crazy. He's out there baptized. And now some of you have been down there to see him. Now he's the preacher. He's the one that can preach. But I left him too. I just had to go out into the desert to find myself, to prove something to myself, to be on my own and figure something out. And I'm not quite sure what I figured out out there. But I knew that when the worst of it was over, I wanted to come back here to see a gallery, plunge into it. Feel the cold when the sun on here. It was exhausting. So I crawled out of the sea, wet, laid on soft sand. The sand by the sea is different than the sand in the desert. The sand in the desert is hard and harsh. The one by the sea is kind of soft and wet. I fell asleep in the sun. And that's what some of you showed up. Some of you fresh me. So I poked him with a stick and probably thought I was dead, lying there by the sea. Got freaked him out when I stood up and he saw me kind of a little crazy look. My hair out of here, I had to change for 40 days. Got freaked him first now. But I was still alive. Never felt more alive. That's why I wanted to come out here and just be with you guys. You guys fed me. Fed me what you had. Food tastes great. Not when I'm cooking, not when I'm cooking, but food tastes great. Food tastes great. That's why I just, just want to be with you guys for a little bit. Take my time before I get home. Get a shave. So I don't look like this when I like, scare my mom. And go back. If there's anything I can say about that time in the desert, I just want to share with you a couple of ideas. <clears throat> Blessed are the poor in spirit. The misfits. The ones who have trouble fitting in, the ones who get cut from the team, you're going to make the most important team. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they born. Those that have lost a parent and grandparent. Those who care for some with Alzheimer's and grieve a little more each day by day. They will be comforted. Blessed are the meek who care for the earth and do everything they can to fight the climate, to fight against the climate change. They will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who suffer injustice, those who have been bullied, they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful who know how to forgive, they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, those who know how to love passionately, intensely, chastely, they will see the face of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. The guy who just wants everything, every, everybody in their lives to get along. They will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you because of me. 
rejoice and be glad. Your reward will be great in heaven. Well, we all, each of us is going to have to go through a different part of the desert in our own lives. And perhaps, maybe with these words, not to make it easier, but to make it a little less lonely.
for all those prayers that we hold in the depth of our hearts. We pray. Lord, we pray in a special way for our military men and women serving around the world in harm's way and other way. We also pray for our first responders here in the community and keep us safe and minister to us sometimes in our darkest of moments. In gratitude, we pray for the Lord. Your love, God, we give you thanks. You have heard the prayers of the people, the ones we have given voice to, and the ones that are in the silence of our hearts. We ask that you grant them for the people. I make this request in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Said, Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Towards her, 
we eagerly, eagerly hasten as pilgrims, advancing by faith and rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both the strength and the good example. And so we glorify you with the multitudes of saints and angels with one voice of praise we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ending, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Extend to one another a sign of Christ peace.
Go and proclaim the gospel by your lives. Friendships and doing our best. 
We also ask for help when we struggle. We pick each other up when we fall. We pray together and mourn together the loss of a loved one a couple weeks ago or the loss of a staff member a year ago today. And we know that it's okay when our hearts are filled with this tremendous amount of joy and it's okay when those same hearts are filled with a tremendous amount of grief. It's like a lifetime of emotions crammed into our very short time together at Grand and Warren. And as you know, it's a lot easier to celebrate together than it is to struggle together or mourn together. But quite frankly, I believe that it is in the struggling and the mourning that we are truly our best. And that's what prep shine brightest. So as we look ahead for the rest of the year, as always, we're going to do so with great confidence. We will go confidently forward, forever forward, forever forward as marauders. Knowing that as a prep family, we celebrate, we mourn, we love, we fail, we get up, we do that together. Knowing that we're always going to win, like I told you before, we're always going to win. Not immediately, but eventually. We don't give up. I love you guys. We got this. Let's go prep.